Jacob Waltz took to the grave one of the most infamous secrets of the 19th century, the location of the lost Dutchman's mine. It hid the mine and said you'll never find it unless you're, uh, I have to show you, be standing right next to it, never know it's there. Former Attorney General Robert Corbin has dedicated much of his adult life searching for the alleged Dutchman's gold. He is one of thousands of Dutch hunters who trek through the superstition wilderness annually in pursuit of both adventure and wealth. I told Helen she had to document everything. In recent years, Corbin combined his knowledge of the terrain with his late wife, Helen Corbin's thorough research on the Dutchman's life. I can prove he came in New Orleans, and I can prove that he left Castroville from California. I can prove he came back from California before he found his mine. Now let me tell you the story of Jacob Waltz, the Dutchman. On a typical afternoon in Apache Junction, Larry Hedrick leads small tours around the Superstition Mountain Museum's diverse Arizona exhibits. But it's not unusual to find him lingering around the Lost Dutchman's exhibit. Separating fact from fiction is the most difficult part. But we do know that uh, Jacob Waltz was trapped in one of our hundred year floods in the Salt River and spent two days and two nights up a tree. When he was rescued, he contracted pneumonia, and his friend Julia Thomas, a black lady, and Richard Holmes took him to his homestead that he had down by the airport and, um, and took care of him. And he explained on his deathbed how to find his mine. Even with the clues provided, Thomas and Holmes were unsuccessful in their quest to find the Dutchman mine. The only remaining evidence of the mine's alleged existence are six pieces of jewelry made from the 50 pounds of gold ore found underneath Jacob Walsh's bed the night he died. If you had a gold mine, it was producing just two ounces per ton. Every four heaping wheelbarrow loads of ore, you would have about $2,000 today. Uh, this gold assayed out at 5,000 ounces per ton. And now you can begin to understand why so many people are looking for the Lost Dutchman mine. But in recent years, Dutch hunters have not played by the same rules as the original prospectors. Diana Bishop is a park ranger at the Lost Dutchman State Park, an area instituted to preserve the wildlife of the Superstition Mountains. Since 1984, no new mining or prospecting is allowed in the wilderness, so it's strictly closed to mining and prospecting. That hasn't stopped Dutch hunters like Corbin from continuing his search, although today Today, if he was to find the alleged gold, he would have to obtain a treasure trove permit before prospecting the area. Right now, I think I've got a pretty good idea where mine may be. Now, I may be absolutely wrong. Now, who knows until you find it? Nobody will know. And even if you find it, nobody's going to believe that it's mine. For now, Corbin wears a gold ring, one that he claims came from the same ore as the Lost Dutchman's, as a reminder of his ongoing search. And in a way, I don't want to find it. I don't want it found because it's part of the allure of Arizona, the old west, that once you've proven that you find it, then it's gone. There's nothing more to look for. Jacob Waltz isn't the only one who met his end in pursuit of the mine. In the past 130 years, over 100 people have lost their lives in the Superstition Mountains. All this adds to the legend and the lore of the Lost Dutchman's Mine. For ACTV Monthly, Megan Neighbor.